Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Greetings from the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, 106 County Road 1111, Atlanta, Texas, zip code 75551. I am your host, Pastor Alisto Maxi, and to the Shiloh Church family, we must keep praying that God will intervene. Amen. Let us pray. Your good and gracious master, we come to you once again with our gifts and humble hearts. Thank you for another their fellowship, another their friendship, Lord. Thank you for this day, a brand new day we've never seen before. A day that wasn't promised nor guaranteed, Lord, but only because of your grace and mercy. Let Lord, we say thank you. Lord, I bless those that are sick, those in the hospitals, nursing homes, institutions, Lord, even those in the jailhouse, those that are homebound, Lord. Stop by and see them, Father God, and let them know that you're there. For that, Lord, we say thank you. Bless them also, Father God, that maybe someone else will go by and visit them, Father God. For that, we can also say thank you, Lord. We actually bless, Father God, each city, each county, our nation, and the world, Father God. Give all our leaders, Father God, guidance, clearance, and understanding, Father God, that they might consult you, Father God, in their decision making. And Father God, I ask you bless each pastor preacher, Father God, that's going to preach your word this morning, that you give them something to say, Father God, that we have someone that they may come run and ask what must I do to be saved. For that, Lord, we say thank you. Father, we thank you for traveling mercy, Lord, for those that are going up and down the dangerous highways, Father God, that you will give them safe, safety, Father God, for the head you're protecting around them, Lord. And then, Father God, bless us all when we head back to our respective destinations, Lord, to our home that we find the building and where we live. They Lord, will say thank you. Because, God, we pray that you be in our homes, Father God, and in our lives and our hearts. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for your daughter's son, Jesus, and what he did in the old rugged cross. That he bear all our burdens, Lord, for we might have a right to the tree of life. But, Father God, you are the, bottom, the, the burden bearer, Lord. And Father God, you have fixed our hearts in many ways and many times. Sometimes without us even asking, Father God. But, Father God, we ask you to fix the hearts of those that have lost loved ones, Father God. Not only during this pandemic, but on Father God, any other way. Just bless them, Lord. Give them understanding. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you will repeat after me our church resolution today, our church resolution, because in order to become a better Christian believer, you must be aware of your behavior. Somebody say amen. It is our goal at church, Shallow Vision Baptist Church, to be vigilant of our behavior at all times. Amen? Repeat after me. I will let God take control of my thoughts at all times. Before I speak, I will let God control my words. Before I react, I will let God control my actions. Before I condemn, I will let God control my inner spirit. Before I point fingers, I will let God control my heart. Before I become the problem, I will let God handle my temperament. Before I hinder God's progress, I will ask God to move me out of the way so his will may be done. If I do all these things, I will have the peace and the joy God intended me to have. Amen. May God bless you. Our scripture reading today will come from the New Testament, book of Revelation, New Testament, Revelation, Revelation, chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. Revelation chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. And it reads, He did have in the year. Let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. And unto the angel of the house of the Laodicean write these things, said the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thy word cold or hot. So because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. 
May God bless his work. I like to use for a subject. Does God know who you are? Does God know who you are? Do you know where you stand with God? Does God know who you are? We are still on the topic of creating a healthy church. And to create a healthy church, we must remember our purpose on this earth. Our purpose on this earth is not to please ourselves, but to please the one and only living God. Somebody say amen. But turn me now to Revelation chapter 3. Begin with verse 13. And it simply says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. In other words, let us hear what the Spirit has to say to this church. And every church is open under the name of God today. And all churches that open in his name. In person, or by social media, Facebook, YouTube, whatever it may be. All churches. We would like to believe we are true followers of Christ. Somebody say amen. But my question is, does the Spirit of God truly know you? Better yet, can God watch your behavior and tell that you are his child? Or would he look at your behavior with confusion? Because you are confused. We must ask ourselves today, church, some hard questions. Does the Spirit of God truly know who you are? Maybe the question should be, have you separated yourself from God, from the love of God, from the mighty hand of God? God has always been the same with you. But have you always been the same with God? Question number one is, does God recognize you through your worship of him? We know we're living under strange times now. Strange situations, pandemics, hatred, law heaven day, fires never seen before. But if the church is not inside you, heaven today, y'all, if the church is not inside your heart, your previous worship should have, I feel should have, prepared you for this day and these things that are happening. I might say amen. I said your previous worship. That means if you were paying attention to God's word, you would see that God's word told you about all these things. He prepared you for this day, a day that you've never seen before. You should have been listening, church, in worship instead of, y'all ain't praying for me, instead of texting somebody who's still at home in bed. Now they know that you're at church. And they texting you and you got the nerve to text them back. Somebody say amen. I'm just going to keep it real today. Now the Bible tells us about plagues and diseases and wars and rumors of wars and hatred and bitterness and anger. So these things should not be a surprise to you. Because the Bible warns us of these things. But at this point in time, we should be able to pray ourselves through these things. Through these situations. Somebody say amen again. At this point in time, we should know how to ask God for forgiveness. And then ask your fellow man for forgiveness. At this point in time, your church should already know who God is. Through your Christian walk. Through your Christian talk. Through your Christian living. Now, y'all just quit praying for me. But parents, your child should be able to see Christ in you. Their memory should not be a refrigerator that's always filled with beer. Y'all ain't gonna pray for me. Their memory should not be home that's always had cigarettes and weed laying around on the table. Y'all still ain't talking to me. Their memory should not be a home filled with fighting and profanity. Their memory should be 
a home filled with love and filled with the word of God. Because life is known to mimic what is in the memory bank. Did y'all hear what I said? Life is known to mimic what is left in the memory bank. Now you grew up praising God. Parents that talk to you about God, then you should continue to live that lifestyle. But if you lived in a home, Lord, every day, where there's bitterness and hatred, you would try. You don't have to, but you would try to mimic that same thing in your life, in your love life. But I come by to tell you this morning, you don't have to, because God is an everlasting God. His love is everlasting. He can change your way of thinking if you just give your heart to him. Church, you were and is always responsible for the spiritual knowledge of your children. Parents, it's difficult to raise a child to know God. Now watch this. If you don't know God for yourself, y'all quit praying for me then. Look at verse 15 and 16. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were, oh, uh, I wish they were, cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I spew thee out of my mouth. Lord, have me today. Church God is simply saying, I know your works. I know all things you do and don't do. That you are neither cold nor hot. But I wish you were one or the other. Y'all ain't praying for me today. Because you're not cold. But you ain't on fire for God neither. God wants you to choose today. Be hot or be cold. I was about to tell you today that cold water is pure. But watch this. Hot water kills impurities. But God don't like lukewarm Christian believers. Any little gust of wind or little gust of sayings or words throw you off. You try to follow God and just anything come along and you start following it. Or you start following he or she. Y'all ain't talking to me. But since you are lukewarm, like lukewarm water, God said, I will spit you out of my mouth. Today, church, this characterizes the prevalent time that we're in right today. Sister Carolyn Cook, some folk think if your church is not open, then you're not trusting in God. Y'all ain't praying for me. Other folk think, if your church is open, then you've proven that you are trusting God. Well, I stop by to tell you today that as long as you have the Holy Spirit of God, everything will be all right with God. I believe that it's all right with God. Somebody say amen today. Now, what would cause God to spew you out of his mouth? What I'm glad you asked today, I'm going to give you a few examples. When you plot to do evil against another person, this is not a fruit of the Spirit, and God don't know you. When you stab people in the back for no reason, it is not a fruit of the Holy Spirit, and God don't know you. When you're selfish with the tithes and offering, I knew you weren't going to like that one. This is not a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I stop by to tell you that God don't know you. But if you're truthful with yourself, you know where you stand with God. I've told you many times that God can't disguise you from the world, can't distinguish you from the world, then you belong to the world. Don't stop praying for me now. I said if God can't distinguish you from the world, then you still belong to the world because God knows his children. 
Brother David, if you're still walking the fence with your Christianity, this means you have one foot in the world and another foot on the banana peel. Y'all ain't praying for me. I said, if you're still walking the fence with your Christianity, you have one foot in the world and the other on a banana peel. So one foot already knows it's in the world and the other one can go either way. Y'all ain't talking to me. That's because you still belong to the world. You're neither hot nor you cold. You just lukewarm. You just hanging around. Both feet should be firmly planted, should be firmly rooted in the one who died for you, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now you say God knows the real me. Well, baby, that's your problem. He does know the real you. And he don't like who you have become. Times as it once was shall be no more. Time for playing with your life and with God's time is gone. It's time to get serious. We are evolving now. It's a new time in our lives. Sister Angela, Sister Godfrey, I hear people say every day, I'm ready for things to get back like they were. Well, baby, I stopped by to tell you this morning that I don't want things to be like they were. I want things to be better than they were. I don't want people to be like they were. I want people to be better than they were. Because if things stay the same, then all these hundreds of thousands of people that have died from this pandemic died in vain. Y'all still ain't praying for me today, and we don't want that. If we had a chance to look at the history books in the future, we can say we should have saw this day coming. Sister Shirley and Sister Ray Mama said there would be days like these. Y'all ain't praying for me because man has been wicked for so long that God has gotten tired of waiting for us to change to get it right. This earth is ready for change. So I ask you the question, does God know who you are? Does God know where you stand with him? God is accustomed to hearing your voice, is he? Or you are you a stranger to God? See, God should hear your voice when things are going well and not when you just need something from him. See, God get tired of folks trying to use him. See, you can't use God. But God can use you. Is he impressed by how you treat your fellow man? Is he smiling at the things you've taught your children? Because if God ain't smiling, then you have work to do. If God ain't smiling, I have one thing to say to you today, church, you better get busy, and you better get busy quick. I'm talking about quick and in a hurry. And you better get busy now. I'm not talking about maybe tomorrow or next week, but today. Because if God don't know who you are, don't pretend to be a sheep while you act a wolf in sheep clothing. Y'all ain't praying for me. Because God knows how you are, and God knows who you are. That's why he sent Jesus Christ to die for us all with three nails and a cross. He took one nail in the left hand for all your sin, took one nail in the right hand for all your sin, took one nail in both feet for all the sins of the world, and he hung, bled, and died on an old rugged cross that you and I might have a right to the tree of life. He hung that bled and died. We well, allowed us to be buried in Joseph, brand new barber, tuned the barber because he wasn't going to need it long. And he laid there all Friday evening, all Friday night. They all they sat in all Saturday night. But early Sunday morning rose with all power. And I thank God he rose. And I thank God for Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Church, does God know who you are? There is room at the cross for you. The doors of the church open, but there'll be one today. There is room at the cross for you. Even though millions, trillions have come, there's still room, room for one. There is room at the cross for you. Would there be one today? There is room at the cross.
close for you. There is room at the cross for you. Even though millions, trillions have come, there's still room, room for one. There is room at the cross for you. And that one should be and could be you. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. For we thank you in the name of Jesus for the word of God. For God, you bless those that have open ears to hear, open arms to hold. For God, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus. Bless their hearts, fill their hearts with joy, with love. For God, right today, we need you, Lord. During this pandemic, Father God, we're all struggling with different things, Lord. But Father God, you're the way maker. You're the heart fixing the mind regulating, but that's all we say thank you. But most of all, once again, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus, and what he did on the old rugged cross that we all might have a right to the tree of life. But that's all we say thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.